So how a dark ranger weighs in on this climate change thing is in fact that the more light we produce, the more electricity we need to have generated. And uh, there are places like Scotland's future and like Sweden where they'll be 100% wind powered. So maybe it's not as critical. But here in the United States, we still heavily rely on coal and we're shifting, but we're only shifting towards natural gas and all the fracking involved. And uh, the average person can solve two really big global problems just quite simply by coming up with better lights. Either turning those lights off where they would leave them on or getting motion sensor light fixtures or even just lights that have a mirrored surface on the inside. So that would be the Dark Ranger's message on this issue. Better lights solve truly global problems. Here in the desert southwest, there's some real issues. I've been studying climate records for the last 65 years, and even just 65 years reveals some astonishing things. For example, we have a five and a half Fahrenheit increase of our average low temperatures. This is very important to the Bryce Canyon region because the big draw here are the hoodoos, these tall pillars of limestone rock that are formed by freezing and thawing. If you can imagine my hand here as one of these fins of rock, well, when you have snow up on top during the sunny um, winter days, it's above freezing long enough, the snow melts as water, trickles down inside the rocks, and then later at night it freezes and it breaks open these gaps. And these gaps eventually isolate themselves and they become these towering hoodoos. Well, the situation is that we no longer have the 200 freeze-thaw cycles each year, so the process of fracturing the rock into individual columns is happening at an increasingly slower rate. At the same time, our precipitation is shifting away from snow towards rain. And because all this rock is limestone, and limestone is heavily susceptible to the natural amount of carbonic acid that's in the atmosphere whenever rain falls through air with carbon dioxide in it, it creates carbonic acid. So this chemical weathering is accelerating the rounding of the, the hoodoos that will eventually erode them and, and lay them flat. So instead of having great big tall statuesque hoodoos that Bryce Canyon is famous for, we'll have these shorter, lumpier, dumpier bits of rock that are commonplace. You can find them anywhere in the world. And I think that's a significant point. I think some people are tired of hearing about ice caps and hearing about polar bears. And so given the opportunity, I'll say, look, the way we're managing, and let's be honest, the way we're ignoring or mismanaging our atmosphere can actually affect the very rock of the planet. Hopefully that makes people sit up and take notice and go, wow, the rocks? Really, the rocks? If it's that bad that the rocks are in jeopardy, then you know what? Maybe I should get a more fuel efficient vehicle. And that's where just having a solution, a simple thing that you can do to make a difference, then makes you part of the solution. So if you had just one minute that you could invest in doing something good to deal with global climate change, I would recommend mass transit. Mass transit's not just for poor people, it's also for really cool people people that really want to be a force for good in the help against global climate change because when we can put more people on the same vehicle then it's less carbon emissions that are being sent out. So that's why I would encourage people take a minute figure out your urban your rural mass transit system or even the ones at your national park you'll be happy you've done so.